So why am I playing Phoenix Force in a heavy lockdown meta? Because I'm crazy. Uh, but the other reason is that it's a good opportunity to show how this deck can perform under the worst of times. And when I say this is the worst of times, that's because this meta is being dominated right now by Lockdown or Hella. This deck can kind of deal with Hella if you draw well, because you can put a lot of power on the board, but Lockdown is very tough and you need to draw perfectly and have a little bit of luck. And today I will be showing two different versions of Phoenix Force. So ideally Professor X and Hella both get updated, nerfed, <coughs> uh, and then you should have an easier time. But otherwise, you're going to see how to navigate it during these bad times. So first up, I'm going to be using my classic version of the deck. There are two tech cards. You have Phoenix Force, of course, and the Shuri Nimrod and Double Destroy lines. Uh, if you want more information on this deck, I do have a previous video on how to pilot it. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that there was a patch where move cards had a significant change. Previously, you could play a destroy card in one lane, then move your multiple man, and then the destroy action would happen, and then multiple man would get moved back. Now no matter how you what order you play that in the move action will happen first so multiple men will move and then go back so you will have two multiple men but now if you played a carnage in that lane carnage will destroy that multiple man now where before you could get away with it with proper order so keep that in mind the only destroy card in that circumstance that you could really get away with playing is venom but then you also need to worry about a potential shang chi so just it's, it's going to play a little bit differently, so you need to be a little bit more careful. But otherwise, if you want informa more information, like I said, uh, you can see that video. Now, this next version of the deck that I'm using is leans more heavily into the move aspect. So when you don't draw your Phoenix Force line, whereas on the previous deck, you go down your Shuri Nimrod, now you go down a more traditional move path. Now, the thing with traditional move is you don't necessarily want to always play Heimdall. So you really need to pick your spots. You can do a combination of Phoenix Force and move uh, with Heimdall. Sometimes you want to leave your power where it is and play Shang-Chi because they're expecting the cards to slide. So with more traditional move, there's actually a lot to think about. So this is probably a more advanced deck where you will have some growing pains if you decide to use it. Uh, you may see some of those growing pains uh, during this video. I always like to include at least one loss. So we will take this deck in and see how it does. Keep in mind, I'm playing against a heavy lockdown meta. So I may be doing a lot of retreating that I end up not showing, but I will try to reference that during the video, at least through editor's notes. And this is the other version we will be taking in. Okay, we are starting on a nice even number, 2050. We're going to take this into high ranked infinite and see how we do. Okay, first up we have Jiraiya. Start tower first location, that's kind of nice. That will probably where I, be where I play my multiple man, my opening hand. I do have a tech card in Enchantress. This clearly is not going to be a ongoing opponent that I'm facing though, unless it's Hella Living Tribunal potentially. So like I said, I will play my multiple man down here. That way the destroy card I play gets the start tower bonus. I may end up abandoning this location because with Angela, this is where they're going to stack a lot of their power. I do have Sean. Now, because I have Sean in hand, I want to hold on to the Carnage because I can pair those two on the last turn. So I will play Venom down here to destroy my multiple man. Also, some Angela versions run Professor X. So I need to be a little aware of that. And I did not draw 
the cards that I need. So this is going to be a retreat. I'll play it out since they haven't snapped yet. Because if I draw Phoenix Force here, I can go Spider it. And if they put down their Red Hulk early, this is tempting to snap on. Oh, snap. So th this is an example of why, as an opponent, you should probably be snapping more aggressively than you do. Because, like I said last turn, if they had snapped, I would have retreated. But because they didn't snap, they allowed me to draw into Phoenix Force. And so now I can just spread a bunch of power all over the place. And I snapped, <laughs> actually. So we are in a very good position here. And let's see if they played their big six cost card middle. And if so, that is an easy Shang-Chi. Oh, I'm shaking. All systems go. <laughs> I think this should work out. Okay, so this is a compete for all three lanes type of deal. So I will drag this left, this multiple man. I will drag this one right. I will play Nico here and Sean middle. And then I do have one more energy. So how much space do I have? Undo turn. I have two, three, and two. So now I have one, three, and two. I have one, three, and zero. Where do I stack the power? I think I stack the power here. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I... The reason I'm stacking power here is because why not heavily contest this side if I can? So that's what we're gonna do. We have this Sean. Okay, they abandoned. That is why, oh, I might not have enough power middle now. I wonder. I have eight power middle. This is going to be tight. But again, we're challenging left pretty significantly. Evil I are, I will snap this nerd away. Yeah, we won left. And we lost mid, I think. Because we didn't put the demon there, but that's fine. Perfect. So it actually wouldn't have mattered. My original play with the demon middle actually would have won middle. But this was a this was a strong win. And the reason I played it out this specific way is because I wanted to get as much power left because I knew they were going to have a lot of power left with Angela. Like I said at the beginning of the game. They should have snapped me out of the game. <laughs> they should have snapped me out of the game. But they didn't. And because I had Sean, I figure I could get away with less power because they would add less power middle because the Hulk is just huge. Red Hulk is huge and people are just going to go, okay, my Red Hulk can just solo the lane. I don't really need to add a lot of power there. But like I said, either way, we had the victory no matter how I played this and a good strong win to start, even though I was ready to retreat. Alrighty, next up we have Malva. We have two destroy cards and a tech card, our only tech card in this version of the deck. We have Iron Fist that can move cards, get our multiple man down. I don't know if I will destroy him yet. They have priority, so they could disrupt what I'm trying to do with multiple man. Shuri's lab is fantastic. Snap. Snap into this. Even if they disrupt my 
play with multiple man, just having Venom and Shuri's lab can almost solo that lane. Sean can also solo that lane too. But this is absolutely fantastic. We are very well positioned. Now, okay, no moving. Basically two ruins and a Shuri's lab. So they have priority. They could Cosmo me here if this deck runs Cosmo, but we will see if that is the case. It is not. So we will have two 13 power multiple men. Like I said, Venom will just solo this lane because everything we eat will have that power doubled. So they really should just retreat <laughs> because because uh, I'm I'm about to clean their clock. And the moves happen first. So I think I want to, there's options here. So I could drag the multiple man and then go spider. The reason I'm doing it this way is to move their silk and potentially clog them up. I could hold on to go spider and on the last turn do a venom and dagger and go spider to a different lane. So that's very tempting. And I can always go spider and Sean on the last turn as well. I will I will hold. I will play patiently. I and I really I don't want priority, quite frankly. So I don't have priority. That way I can potentially use Sean. Oh, nice. They use the Shadow King. Okay. Now, maybe in hindsight, it would have been nicer if I had Ghost Spider last turn. <laughs> Let's see. I do have Heimdall now, too. So, yeah, man. Using Ghost Spider last turn was the play in hindsight because I drew into Heimdall, actually. But that is fine. Let's see. They're probably going to play hard for left with the Elsa there because they wouldn't get the bonus with Silk moving. So I may just end up avoiding that side. But I also have Ghost Spider. So I think I load up mid. I move. I can actually challenge a bunch of lanes. To Ghost Spider here, that would pull this multiple man. You can hold on to Ghost Spider to see wh which one she is highlighting. She's highlighting the one on the left. So that's 18 plus a Venom. And then just play the Iron Fist down here for stats. Or play it here to bounce the Silk Middle. And I didn't have time to run the math. <laughs> so 16, 18, plus 321, 42 points. So this should win. Math don't fail me now. <laughs> we pull the multiple man. Yeah, we're. I think we're gonna win all three lanes. And we properly called the lanes they were trying to challenge. Perfect. And then this is going to flip for on the left for two points. So we're gonna win left by one. As you can see how Venom works in Shuri's lab is just absolutely fantastic. This cleans up. And there we go. This was always going to be a hard game to lose with Venom into Shuri's lab. Because honestly, I could have played a bunch of different options. I could have played Dagger and then Ghost Spider instead, or just move my multiple men and then play a Heimdall. Okay, we are up against Timor. 870. Might have our hands full. 
Our opening hand is okay. We have one of our tech cards, our only tech card actually. We do have a destroy. Drawing a card is fantastic for combo decks, which is what we are. Because Deathlock is not a help and neither is Hulkbuster, quite frankly. So Angela, Kitty, Athena it is. I want to hold on to the Ghost Spider because my turns are going to get delayed if I end up seeing this game out. We have Sean for right. They sacrifice their kitty to turn her into a Hulk. They put Athena into Danger Room. That is good if you can get away with it, and they did. And we have nothing to destroy. Oh, I can't destroy the Hulk. Do I destroy the Hulk? They don't run Sean, so I could actually destroy the Hulk with my Venom. Next turn, use Phoenix Force. Okay, they're snapping. I'm seeing this through. I want to do this. And then I think I move the Hulk, the Venom over here. And force them to play into Danger Room. Okay, now they can move Nocturne there and load up. Okay, so this might be a little dicey. We shall see. Does Ghost Spider get to live? No, she does not. Play Iron Fist. And then Phoenix Force here, because I don't want priority. The, the, what I am doing now is navigating priority. Ravona and Sage, okay. Iron Fist got to live. I have successfully navigated priority. And now it is, where do I want my Hulk to end up? Yeah. 17, so could they get 10 power here? They could move the Nocturne and play here. We are going to trust that six is enough right. Because I think that they think I'm going to move my Hulk and challenge another lane. So this is just a pure guessing game. I am going up against a very high ranked player. So they're probably gonna outplay me, but sometimes some of these, the higher ranked players are easier to predict because they're going to, they think that you think they're going to do the unorthodox play. So they might do the unorthodox play. Oh, nice. Oh, they had Sean in their deck. Oh, they had Sean in their deck. Would we have won the tiebreaker? No, we wouldn't have. It would have been moving mid. They had Sean in their deck. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this was just a guessing game. Most, I have, haven't seen the Angela Athena kitty decks run Sean. So I just rolled the dice on this one. Okay, so I lost this game on turn five. I should have played Iron Fist middle and moved my Hulk middle and contested all three lanes. How I played this game is I abandoned middle when I shouldn't have. I could have been winning all three lanes and forced them to also win all three lanes. I only forced them to win two lanes because I gave them one. So my mistake was actually on turn five. So this is why I like to dissect the losses. It can sting sometimes because, hey, you just lost. Like, why do I want to sit here <laughs> staring 
at a losing screen. And this is why, to figure out how to best approach the situation next time. So, which will be to not load up so much power left, spread it out if I think I can get away with it. And that's how I ultimately would have won the game. Okay, next up is Equus. Nova Roma, good location for a combo deck because we're drawing through the stuff that we cannot use. <laughs> we do have Shuri, so this might be a Nimrod line if we can draw into him. Echo always makes me think Cerebro 2, and we have Enchantress for that. Phoenix Force, okay. In turn, there is just nothing to do. I may play out my Deathlock so I can just get a card draw. And that is what we will do. It is not Cerebro 2 because they have Jeff. So we will play out the Deathlock. I will play my Shuri middle in case one of my destroy cards gets pulled because this is a Nimrod or nothing line. We drew Nimrod, so we snap, play Shuri middle. There is an argument to be made that I should play right to entice a Sean, but we will give that up. Ooh, long. This is, hmm, I don't have priority. This is a Nomura deck. So Nomura is going to trigger twice. The only chance, I think, is if we can pull a destroy card and I can Enchantress the Wong. So we've already snapped. We'll, we'll see it through. The reason they played Echo is to protect against a Cosmo. But that does not protect against an Enchantress. So we will see. But also, Grand Central is going to mess them up. Boy, they're fishing. <laughs> we have priority. They were fishing for... Namora. Uh, do we still have priority? We still have priority. So... I don't know what to do here. I think I just abandoned left. Yeah, I think I just abandoned left. Because even an Amora left is plus 10. And I'm going to shoot two Hulks over. It's two Hulks. <laughs> two Nimrods. The same power as the Hulks. I'm going to shoot two Nimrods over there. So I just don't think it's winnable for them. So Venom here, Carnage here, and then just play out for stats. The Ghost Spider or the Nico, it doesn't matter. But we are putting two Nimrods here. So I do have space. Uh, I'll leave it. There's an argument to be made I should play Ghost Spider right. But I will, I will leave it. Oh, the White Tiger. That still won't be enough. Yeah. Or will it? 16? No, that's not enough. Because I'm adding 24 there? Yeah. So White Tiger, that should be something I should have expected. That makes sense in a Wong deck. But this, this deck just outputs so much power with the Nimrod line Victory. and I this deck is just fantastic I love this deck to pieces it's it's my baby look at this power it's just fantastic alrighty next up we have fuzzy dice we have our low curve and we have Heimdall so getting in the kiln is going to be a piece of cake 
Nice that it is on the left side. So I may try to win middle. Because Orchis Forge with a Kitty Angela deck, they're going to want to play, right? So if I just play Dagger, make sure Dagger is on the right side. I should be good. So I think I want to play Iron Fist now. Just to get some stats. Oh, they're going to play... Interesting. Okay. So that means I play Dagger here and then go Spider it back. Do I want to do that this turn or do I want to wait? I think I will wait one turn because we will have a Sentinel in hand. Yeah, they're going to be in trouble left, and that's where they're loading up their power. I'm snapping on this. Okay, we're going to trust Dagger is just enough points to win there, and we're going to load up... We're going to load up the other lane. And it's probably going to be middle. So I'm playing all of my cards right, so that way they shift the middle. Uh, they're going to open it back up. They might open up left again. Get the Hulkbuster down and another Sentinel. I might switch it up. Let's see what they do with Nocturne. But my, my line, yeah, they did open it up. Honda Embassy, okay. I may play for all three lanes. I have priority. Because they might be expecting the shift. Because I could do something like a Phoenix Force mid and a Sentinel right. How much power is that? You figure they're going to play left. So Dagger would be plus 12. 21 on our own. 21. 25 points. So they need to get 12 points left. Can they do that? Which would mean a 10 power card because Angela would get plus 2. Am I overthinking this? <laughs> they could run a Sean. I think I was overthinking it. No, I wasn't overthinking it. I think I played this correctly. I am Iron Man. Put that thing back where you found it before someone gets hurt. Absolutely beautiful. So, with a traditional move deck, Victory. you have Heimdall. Just because you have him does not mean you need to play him. So depending on your level of competition, that's one thing important to assess, right? I am going up against a top 1,000 player. This player is good enough to look at my board and go, oh, this guy put dagger middle. He's gonna slide dagger left. This is a Heimdall. This is classic move. He has Iron Fist. He has Ghost Spider. Iron Fist is more of a clue that it's classic move. So I need to hit left hard. And that's exactly what they did with the Iron Man play. I flipped their expectations. Instead of playing Heimdall, I clearly just played other two cards. And clearly I could have had three power right. It wouldn't have mattered. 
and then slid or I didn't slide. I just kept my cards where they were because they were expecting me to slide. So this is just playing off of my opponent's expectations. Now let's talk through if I would have played through Heimdall, would that still have won? Maybe. So it would have been total power. Let's ignore Phoenix Force and let's ignore the five power Sentinel. I would have played Heimdall middle. So it would have been a tiebreaker because right would have been zero to zero. So Heimdall middle is at 11. And then I have the six power Sentinel and the three power Sentinel. So 11, so 20 power middle. So 20 power. And then like I said, the dagger would have grown to 21. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 plus 20 is... <laughs> 25 plus 20 is 45. And they have 45. It would have been a tie. Or if I would have played Heimdall right, which is maybe what they were expecting, I would have lost because I would have only had 9 power middle. So the Heimdall middle would have tied... Heimdall right would have lost. So what do we do? Play off of expectations and no Heimdall. So this is going to be my last game. So I'll continue to talk through the Heimdall play. So in a standard game, let's say you have Vulture down or you have a Phoenix Force multiple man down. Now maybe it makes sense to do Heimdall because now you just spread this Phoenix Force multiple man all over the place. And it's just GG's. Hell is not beating you. Maybe Living Tribunal, if they really pop off, that's the deck that beats you because you don't have Enchantress in this version. But otherwise, it just murders every deck with power. So, so that's how the Heimdall comes into play. I didn't get to show that off this uh, gameplay because I want to show you serious level of play and how to gain cubes and climb. So for this game... The best way to do that was to not play Heimdall because it subverts expectations. So keep that in mind when you're playing this version of the deck. And we will see how many ranks we climbed. And we gained 160 ranks. So I was able to do this with good fundamental snapping and retreating, which is highly important for a combo deck. I've been recording for 50 minutes. So in that span of time, that's pretty good. At this high of a rank, it is much harder to gain ranks. Uh, one, you're going up against much better competition. And two, you actually gain less snap points the higher up you are. So your progression just naturally slows. So this was actually pretty good progress. If you haven't hit infinite yet, these are good decks to climb with. Again, you want to manage your cubes. When you go up against lockdown decks, if you weren't able to perfectly draw into playing Phoenix Force on turn four, you may get in trouble with Professor X. Leave for one cube. So to show the decks one more time, this is my traditional version, which I've been using for maybe three, four months. So this has been tested over and over again. I have won. Let me pull up my... Conquest Borders, the very first uh, season that Conquest was released, I won with a deck that I forget what I used, and all of the rest have been with this, more or less this exact same version of Phoenix Force, and it's just been wildly successful for me. Again, don't worry about wins and losses, worry about cubes with this deck. Your win-loss ratio, will, you might have a losing record. So you need to just manage your cubes and you can have a ton of success with this deck. And then the Bifrost version, courtesy of Heimdall, leans more into the move side. So I've removed the Shuri Nimrod package and we've replaced that with Vulture and Hulkbuster uh, and Iron Fist. So it leans more into move side. Depending on how the game goes, if you have an extra turn, if you have bonus energy because of locations, you can actually destroy your Vulture and resurrect that. That isn't something I'd normally advise, but if you are actually behind a turn, so let's say you have nothing to destroy, 
So turn three, you play your Vulture. You have your Destroy card in hand. You have a couple of Move cards in hand. Then on turn four, what you can actually do is play your Destroy card and then Iron Fist. And then on the next turn, you play Phoenix Force. And then the Phoenix Force will automatically move for the Vulture, Ghost Spider. You can pull that again, or you can leave it there and pull off something with Heimdall. Or on the last turn, you just leave that Vulture where it is because they think you're going to move it. Again, playing off of expectations. And now you actually do a Dagger and Ghost Spider play. Or you do a Shang-Chi and... Uh, Carnage or just Shang-Chi himself and maybe a Ghost Spider or Iron Fist. So keep that in mind as well with this version. There can be a lot of weird play lines, but again, this is more traditional move. So there will, will be some growing pains. Losses are perfectly fine. Losses are fantastic if you want to get better. Uh, I would suggest if you don't want to lose ranks, practice in Silver Conquest. People take that seriously. So that is the place that I actually did a lot of practicing with Phoenix Force, a lot of practicing. I did it in Proving Grounds, snap turn one, and see if I can win. And I was winning a lot, which is what convinced me, oh, there might be something to this deck. And then to really practice, you go into Silver Conquest, and that's where you practice snapping and retreating properly. So that's how I practiced both of these decks to figure out Okay, when do I snap? Oh, it was a mistake snapping because now I've lost and I see why I lost. So that's how you get better with decks in general. But specifically, if you want to practice this move version, that's where I would suggest if you don't want to lose ranks in infinite or on ladder. So I hope you found this very helpful. I tried to break down as much information as possible and add as many editor's notes as possible. And I gave you a new version of the Phoenix Force deck. So I hope you try it out. I hope you like it. If you're not a fan of Move, I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm not particularly a fan of Move, but Phoenix Forest kind of gets in that area. So I figured, hey, why not lean stronger into it and see how it goes? And we had success. Until next time.